Anyway, the Hopi man says, at first, our babies didn't have much hair. And so what the creator did is uh, he took the hair and he put it on our baby's head like a stamp so that can baby can move and live and go places on the world. He says, I remember because I had to interpret. And I saw so I interpret and I says, <coughs> I have to translate that to them. That's what I said. So like a letter that you write, you can't send the letter until you put a stamp on it, and then it will go far away where you want it to go. If you don't put the stamp on the letter you wrote, it won't go nowhere. And that's the same when the Creator put the hair on our heads, the boys and the girls. That's our stamp, so we can move and live and grow. Oh, that's a good comparison, I thought. And uh, he says, and so, <clears throat> that what we do, that's what it means. That means uh, the longer the man's hair is determines the longer, the more love and care he has for our mother, the earth, and our creator because he never mutilate his hair. The longer the man's hair, the more compassion the more love of life he has amongst the Indian men. That's what he said. Then the old Mohawk man and the old grandma said, Dogeske. That means that's true. They confirmed it. Then they said, the next question came, how come the Mohawks and Seneca and Oneidas and so on, why, how come in the history, there's also pictures of this one hair going in the middle? standing up and just in the middle. So grandma and grandpa said, <clears throat> because the creator doesn't want us to kill somebody. It's forbidden to kill another human being. Absolutely forbidden. And that in our law, in our constitution, there is no such thing as a, a war that's sanctioned by the Creator. There's no such thing in the Indian country, an Iroquois country, as a holy war. <laughs> that's foolish. How can a war of killing be holy or sacred? It's just not within the rationale of a, even a kindergarten person. With that in mind, they said, and so the Iroquois, at times, we have to defend ourselves. And even though the great law took away the warrior society's power and forbid it, the human blood, to become war paint for our men, that's what the great law did. At times, even though those were taken away, there's still some stipulation for it, but it's hard to get it. It's hard to do it. It was made purposely to become hard to do, in case you had to. But like you and I, <clears throat> let us say if somebody came in the door here, and we got kids, and we got nephews and nieces, and let's say somebody came in there, start punching our women, and start using an axe and hitting our kids, or trying to kill them, and maybe did kill them. What are you and me gonna do about that? I'm gonna tell you, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Probably I'm gonna try to defend my women, and probably I'm gonna try, I know I'm gonna defend my kids and my wife, but to what extent will I do this to defend? Will, will, I, 
will I hurt them? Will I kill them? I'm not supposed to. That's what the law says. But when you make me so mad and when you get so mad, you, you enter in a short time of insanity. You don't know logic anymore. You don't know practicalness in those situations. None of us do. So none of us can answer that until that moment arrives. But we do have guiding things that can help us. Do you all follow that? And so whenever the Iroquois people had to defend themselves, which we had to do, that's why the Ojibwe's and Algonquins, they call all the Iroquois, we are the rattlesnake people. That's what they call us, the rattlesnake people. Because if somebody bothers us, the Iroquois will say, don't bother me. Don't, don't bother me. And if there's a place for the Iroquois to go to avoid that problem, he'll go over there. But if you keep following him, he'll say again one more time, don't bother me. And if there's a place for the Iroquois to go to avoid the confrontation, he'll go there. But if it's the third one, you keep following the Iroquois, he'll nail you like you've never been nailed before. <laughs> and we have a reputation for that. If you ask the Algonquins and the Penobscot people and Pashmaquadis, one Iroquois can cause 200 of them to run away. That's in the books. They observe that. And it's because of that. I mean, it's like a dynamite huh? if you do that to them. Now, that's the same thing with a rattlesnake. If you see a rattlesnake somewhere, that rattlesnake will go That means, uh, back off, <laughs> leave me alone, and then he'll run away. Even though he's got potent poison, he'll still go away. He doesn't want to bite you. He doesn't want to have trouble. But if you pursue that rattlesnake further, this time he goes really loud, fiercely. And that means, hey, buddy, I told you, back off. And then the third one, if you bother that rattlesnake, he don't say nothing anymore. He just nail you and don't care where. And then that's why the Algonquin different nations refer to us in the history as the rattlesnake people. Do you, you follow that? So now, when uh, in a World Wars, my father was in the World War II. My uncles was in Korea War and all kind of war, like just here, same thing. We had lots of men went to the wars. And there was a lot of them didn't come back either. And a lot of them come back. Well, when they go to war, we don't take the creator with us. We don't take God with us. The only thing when we send somebody that's got to go to the war, and we try to tell them don't go to the war unless you have to go. You know what I mean? Unless it's in your front door. But if you go to war, they will make a ceremony and they will say to them in the ceremony, they burnt it back and they said, I'm being sent over there and I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to hurt nobody. And I don't want nobody to hurt nobody else either. So help me, I can survive. But they don't ask to take the creator with them. Only that they retain their sanity. So in the old time, what they did was they cut all their hair because that's their stamp that the created Mother Earth gave them so they don't take it to the war. And they only left that one standing up in the middle because that's where the sun will come up in the east and set in the west. So it will touch them and remind them how to become back to sanity. How can they retain their humanness because when they went to the war, they have self-declared. That's what the haircut means. I am entering a time of my life that I am going to be insane. I don't know what I'm going to do if something happens. Just like us, we wouldn't know what we're going to do to the extent. But when it's over, let that hair, let the sun shine on it so it'll heal us, so we might come back, so it'll all go back like it's supposed to be back to a human. 
That's why when guys and people go to wars, even the white people, they come back with this call post-traumatic stress. They're never right after that. Some even kills people, innocent people, because they were, they're still carrying that, what they're not supposed to do. And some of them have killed kids and women over there, uh, just women and kids, or else be killed. And so they carry that. That's a, that's a sickness. And so that's why a lot of Indians, they got ceremonies when the, when the soldier come back to, to try to put back the humanists back to them. Uh, and some of them very beautiful ones too.